Todd. Welcome to the West Coast, land of the best smoke. The Valley, the Bay, and of course, Humboldt. We only crumble, top of the line. Get the blood ready, cross the grapes like wine. We are the dance show. All right, MMA Maniacs, it's time once again for your weekly MMA podcast called Split Decision, brought to you from the Ruloff Family Inc. studios. Uh, big shout out for that uh, that song intro you just heard by Real One. You can get his new album out. It's called Flight 420, surprisingly enough. Imagine that. Imagine that. Uh, check him out at real1209.com. The one is spelled. And also on Instagram, uh, at real1209. Again, the one is spelled out. Yep. That's O-N-E, in case you were... Curious about that. I was, I was, W-O-N? For, for those of you who are rolling the blunt right now, it's R E A L O N E O N E two zero nine. Yeah. Is it two o nine or two zero nine? You know what? I would put two zero. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, tell your friends. You can find us on Speaker Stitcher, SoundCloud. Uh, you can download us on iTunes as well as iHeartRadio and our website, SplitDecisionMMA.com, and uh, on Instagram and Twitter, SD underscore MMA, and our Facebook page, throw us a like, Split Decision MMA Podcast. Big thanks to StrongBoardBalance.com. Change the way you work out. Get on board, StrongBoardBalance.com, and check out their Instagram for a chance to win a strong board because they kind of they kind of swing that. Do we still have it here? Yeah, I, I had it here this week, and uh, my core is is real tight. i got to get it to the, the voodoo gym, but... My core is tight. Your core, your core is tight. Yeah. Is it easier to push out farts now? Nah. Well, you know, <laughs> getting out of bed, man. It's like I just. <laughs> is your son walking yet? Yeah. You should put him on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's falling over and bumping his head anyway. Go home, baby. You're drunk. Go home, Go home baby. <laughs> Uh, so again, strongboardbalance.com and of course, uh, mymmanews.com, our second home and your place for breaking news because we bring you the show once a week, but they're breaking the stories as they happen. So check them out if you want to stay current, mymmanews.com. Yeah, and the guy who runs that, his dumb ass is on the cover of this week's uh, podcast because he didn't think I would really use the picture. Is that right? Yeah. Is it a picture of him doing something stupid? Yeah, he's got this like, you know those uh, wig hats? He looks like Red Foo. Because <laughs> nice. cause they're on the East Coast, so it's when they have that like... 40 feet of snow. Yeah. He's out shoveling. He should. Does he have the red foo hat on and the thong? <laughs> you know what? I I don't have the rest of the picture, but knowing, <laughs> knowing how they do it at, at my MMA News, probably. Probably. Because I think one time they were doing butthole shots. All right. Jeez. Like, you mean taking shots from buttholes? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just know that we need to get plane tickets one time and go party with these guys. I was wondering if it's pictures of balloon knots or if it's actually drinking out of someone's asshole. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Butt chugging. Butt chugging. Just gross Josh out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the balloon knots. Uh, that's a perfect uh, image there. Yeah. So, obviously, we're minus Dodge once again this week. He's, uh, he's slinging fish. Down at his his restaurante. Hey, what you got to do? Got to pay the bills. Got to pay the bills. Get the lights on. Hey, but thanks for sending us the links. Yes, sir. Because <laughs> I am far too lazy to look this shit up on my own. Yep. Uh, so we'll jump into the big story this week, of course, is UFC 196, which is now Ultimate Fight Night 82. Also hashtag is Debacle Fest. Debacle Fest 2016. <laughs> this all started with Cain Velasquez pulling out of the heavyweight rematch with Fabricio Verdum uh, due to injury. He never has any kids because he's the king pullout. He's, he's just, <laughs> this is accurate. <laughs> I've been discussing this with a friend of mine, how much Dana White must hate this guy. How many pay-per-views and, and events that he has just completely ruined. I mean, go from the Brock Lesnar being the biggest star in the UFC, the biggest draw in the UFC, and Kane just demolishes him and basically yeah. boots him out of the UFC, yeah. followed up by him getting the heavyweight strap, going to headline their first event on Fox, not Fox Sports 1, not FX, not Fox Sports 2, but fucking Fox. And he gets knocked out by Junior Dos Santos inside of 34 seconds, to which all these new fans that could have like started liking MMA were like, well, this is dumb. Is this how it is all the time? Yeah, exactly. To, to all the way to now, to where he's pulling out of the UFC 196 yeah. and basically ruined the event, Steve Amioic was uh, given the opportunity to face Fabricio Verdum and, of course, jumped up and said, absolutely. Let's do this. Fabricio Verdum immediately was like, no, my back hurts too. <laughs> I'm hey, I like Steve's quote. I wouldn't want to fight me either, bro. Yeah. It was what's weird to me about that, about him pulling out as well, is like he was training to fight a guy like Cain Velasquez who has every weapon imaginable. He's a, he's a collegiate wrestler. He learned jiu-jitsu under Dave Camarillo, who's one of the best coaches. And he's also learned his striking at AKA, which we've seen how much it's improved over his career. And he's been manhandling people, except for Verdum, obviously. Uh, and, and then so Verdum was training for this beast, and then he gets handed Steve Amioic, who's basically a striker. 
Uh, see, I don't know. Stipe's kind of that. He's got that street judo. You don't know what he's going to hit you with. <laughs> <laughs> and that could be it, too. That could be because he's, he's a heavy striker. Yeah. his uh, hit, uh, the, Like when we were watching the last fight with him, I, I was telling the guy right next to me, I was like, you guys got to watch. I go, because even though his hands don't look like they're going fast, it's like cinder blocks. And then lo and behold, boom, boom. It was over. Yeah. Night night for his opponent. So now we have uh, UFC 196 is free on Fox Sports 1. It's Ultimate Fight Night 82. And so UFC 197 has now become UFC 196. Is that what you said earlier? Yeah. And our headliners are, uh, who is it again? It's Hendrix. No, this is uh, Johnson. Oh, oh yeah, Hendrix Thompson. Yeah, Hendrix versus Thompson. That is now your, your main event. That is your headlining fight for what was supposed to be UFC 196. Right. So I can see why they why they moved it because I don't really see this one putting a lot of pay-per-view dollars on there. I I think they should have just ran with it and seen what happened. Would have been terrible. You think so? Yeah. I I don't know. This would have been one of those gambles where let's just see what happens. I just don't think the draw power is there for people to do the buys. I mean, you got the opportunity to have a lot of really good potential. Uh, potential so did they change? Fights. Did they change? Did they give people back money on their tickets for the people who went to? You know what I mean? Those people still had to pay. Yeah. They didn't change the price of those tickets for them, did they? No, no, no. No, because down well, at the bottom, we all know yeah. cards are subject cards to change. Changed. They probably lowered the prices of the tickets now. So the, oh, for the ones that are left. For the ones that are left. And I bet you, you know how Dana's been doing this Twitter handout? I bet you he has twice as many to hand out. Oh, I'll bet he does too. <laughs> I've had events like that working in the radio. Have you? No, seriously, I have a bunch of tickets. Come see me over here. <laughs> I have to fill the place one way or the other. <laughs> I'm standing in front of the venue. The doors are open. Just come see me. Bring You'll get in for free. Bring your mom. Bring your dad. <laughs> uh, so also, Cain Velasquez, his injury is a little more serious than, than thought. He's going in to have surgery on his back to correct it. Well, I... so Kane again is probably going to be out for a year. But it's, but it's not the Kane's not the big deal. The big deal is Verdum and how long he's going to be out. I don't think he's going to be out as long. I don't think his back injury is that serious. Yeah, and I think that they should just shelve Stipe and be like, "This is who you're going to fight." As soon as you get back, figure it out one way or the other. You're walking straight into his fist. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you stay up after that is up to you. Yeah, Stipe don't care. He went right back to work at the fire department. Right. Of course. So hopefully Verdun will be back maybe, I don't know, what, a three-month training camp or something. Because I really think that's it. It was like, oh, Kane, Kane pulled out? So I can I can pull out then, right? Yeah, yeah, I can pull out. I'm going to pull out. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So there you go. That's that's your UFC well, Ultimate Fight Night 81, 82 now. Yeah. Moving on from there, uh, we all know Vanderlei Silva got released from his UFC contract over a plethora of issues, um, facing a, a small suspension. But it looks like when he's done with the suspension, he's only going to be 39, and Scott Coker is now interested in him. You think he's? I don't know. This is this is one of the again. I like Coker because he's willing to take the gamble. Oh yeah, this is a great gamble for him though because those those old school pride nut huggers like Dodge who isn't here yeah. that, are, that are still swinging from the glory days of the of the ring. There's a lot of them. There's I, a ton I work, of them. I work with like four or five of them, and they couldn't tell you who's fighting tomorrow. But they'll they'll bring up some old pride. Oh, fights, they'll dude. they'll break down a, a fucking three round fight in detail that happened. 15 years ago. Yeah. And I say Pride Nut Huggers and Jess, we're all one big family now, but you guys seriously stop swinging from the nuts of Pride. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, like John at, John at work, man. He's just all over BJ's nuts. And I was like, that was that was a whole different time. That was a whole different BJ. It <laughs> was a different era. Yeah. Only good BJ is good BJ, not bad BJ. Yeah. Uh, so, But I think that if he goes, I think if, if <laughs> it, like I said, if Juan goes to, to Bellator, which he probably will, uh, it's going to be a good move for Coker. It's going to be one of those, those uh, Hall of Famer fights that he puts up. Yeah, and it's nothing we're covering today, but it's going to be bigger news coming up. The we just the UFC just lost three fighters. I think only one. We don't want to talk about it, but this starts the slide. <laughs> this, you know, this if you're listening, look it up. Uh, this starts the slide for UFC. I really don't believe that the UFCs realize how bad they shot themselves in the foot with the Reebok deal. And uh, you know, you should see the people that are attacking me on the forums when I say that, and they're like, "You don't know MMA is growing." I'm like, "Okay, you need to learn to separate <laughs> UFC from because MMA is fine. Yeah, MMA is doing great. Yeah, but the UFC itself is really starting to alienate a lot of fighters for being the premier league. It's making some pretty shitty mistakes. Yeah, and and it, it, like you said, it's it's proof by people actually opting to go to other fight organizations instead of the UFC because if you have the choice. Between going to the Canadian Football League, the Arena Football League, and the NFL, why in the world would you pick the other two? 
Right, because because it's because there's not competition for pay, but like the UFC right now, yeah, that's the premier league, but it's not the um, Coker and even the World Series of Fighting is willing to work with you is like, yeah, you go ahead and you bring your brand into the ring. We we want our little piece, but you still get to bring your well, brand. Well, that's what into I'm saying. Ring. Like right. they these other fight organizations are actually giving better incentives than the premier organization. Right. And that's that's not a good thing. Like you said, MMA's fine, but this kind of shows a little little chink in the armor. Is it is that what you You can't use that term. Armor? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, when are we going to get Albert in here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. He's like supposed to be moving gotta, to San Diego Yeah, or we got to get him before he goes to San Diego. So he can, what, nod at the microphone? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Uh, so this is kind of cool. So, uh, Chael Sonnen is going to be with Leila Ali, Vince Neil, and Snooki on Celebrity Apprentice. It, this is a group that he can make it in. I, I think he would do really well on Celebrity Apprentice. But is Donald Trump going to be firing people on this? Because he's busy on his campaign trail. What do you mean? He's not, he's not, it's, he's not even really running for president. <laughs> he's not. He's running for his cabinet to be president. Gotcha. But is he still going to be on the show? I, I, I thought NBC cut ties with him. He's not on the show anymore. Oh, I haven't watched Celebrity Apprentice in probably 10 I've years. I've never watched. <laughs> so, <laughs> See, I think we're finding out that Josh is a closet Trump fan. Oh, my God. He's a trumpeter. No, the NBC <laughs> cut ties with him a while ago. So, so wait. So wait. Mark Cuban does Shark Tank, though, right? Right. I have no idea. Whatever. I think this is. I think you're right, though. Sony could probably really make it on this show. You know who can't? Fucking Snooky. What the hell is she doing there? Come on, it's Vince Neil. Mm. This this guy's face doesn't even move. Snooky wants mush mush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll have to keep an eye out. See how he does. I'm pretty sure he, he's going to dominate. He has season. no other avenue. I mean, they've everybody else has pretty much dumped him. And then every time, like he told us that the the last uh, McGregor fight wasn't going to happen. Even the day of it, watch. Just watch what I say. Okay, I know they're getting in the ring, and I know that they're about to touch gloves, <laughs> but watch. He's going to leave the ring. <laughs> After he knocks him out. So now he's going on shows where celebrities have zero credibility? I Basically. I, no, I don't know. Some some uh, Do celebrities have credibility? Most of them? Yeah. What? That's how come they can push product like crazy. Oh, yeah. Like everybody who pushes Scientology, I'm 100% behind them. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Don't get us locked up. I know. Scientology room. What's the name of that compound? <laughs> <laughs> Where people mysteriously die and the cops aren't allowed in there? We're not talking about it anymore, Joey. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> With the barbed wire fence Speaking around of it? Russians. In the helicopter? No, Nurmagadov. Nurmagadov. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, Nurmagadov is going to be back in April going up against Tony Ferguson. This is going to be... I mean, you know, everybody else is already working out to fill in for Nurmagardov, you know? <laughs> in case he gets hurt. Oh, yeah. Well, if, if Nurmagardov doesn't fight any bears, we should be all right. Uh, this is going to be happening on April 16th, and this could determine the next title challenger. Oh, you know the Diaz brothers are going to be in the fa- in the stands, bro. Oh, we're just ready to, to, to uh, throw down some They're going to cut. I bet you're going to try to corner for Ferguson. <laughs> just from their seats? <laughs> just, just from their seats yelling at them? That'd be awesome. <laughs> We're paying extra money for cage side just so we can oh, yell yeah. at him. Uh, also, another fight that was announced is Evans versus Shogun, targeted for UFC on Fox 19. This is this sounds like a fight that Coker would be promoting. Uh, but still, I like it. This is this is something we've all wanted to see for a while. I don't dislike it, but again, it's, it's you know it's kind of some some older older dudes, especially Shogun. Yeah. Uh, well, Rashad Evans is no f- spring chicken no, himself. Why did I know you were going to say spring chicken? <laughs> I just had like this phrase run through my head. I'm like, this motherfucker's going to say spring chicken, isn't he? Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. And there it is, spring chicken. Because I'm not no spring chicken either. <laughs> <laughs> so we got this fight. Uh, looks like it's it's going to be it's going to be happening, man. Could be a fun one. Yeah. These guys are both fun. They like to mix it up. They like to stand and bang. Even though Rashad's got those really good, well, r- comparatively pretty good wrestling credentials, he likes to stand up and dance a lot. And and uh, and this is going to be on Big Fox. It's Big Fox. I like that. Let's do Big Fox, Little Fox. Big Fox, Little Fox. Yeah. Let's do that from now on. Yeah. Uh, also, this is kind of a big deal. UFC lightweight Nick Hein. Hein? Hein. 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 Nick Hein. Is a former national judo champion and police officer in his native Germany. And on New Year's Eve, we heard about this. There was a bunch of, uh, a hand, I should say, a handful of incidents involving refugees, uh, one including a train station in Cologne, Germany. Uh, he voiced his opinion, made national news in Germany with appearances on all the national uh, television channels and radio stations. Now, Heinz's response has gone international with the recent re- appearance on CNN and wants to follow on other international news outfits. Uh, he basically, he's, he's a fighter, former police officer, 
thinks the attacks uh, were caused by a small minority of immigrants who have been causing problems for a long period of time and are not representative of immigrants generally. He's Hindcop. We had Crow Cop. This is Hindcop. I wish. Can we take that mentality about like not all immigrants are bad and apply that to gun owners too? Not all gun owners are bad. Can we do that? Oh my goodness! Is that possible? Not 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 a small representation of a, of a group of people does not represent the entire group. Can okay. we just put that across the entire board? Calm down, Ted. Can we, Mr. Nugent? Can we? <laughs> I'm gonna agree with you. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because we'll have like a three-hour conversation. So. <laughs> the weather started getting rough. Hey, I'm just saying. Not all drunk drivers are representative of alcoholics. Yeah, yeah. You don't take everybody's car away because a few people drive drunk. Do you? Uh, all right. So what do you think is going to have any ramifications for him uh, either way in the UFC? It, it can't. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Well, that's not true. They've, they've kicked fighters out for their past before. I don't, I don't know. We well, had, why would he? This it, isn't like a negative comment, though, right? It, I, I guess it, it depends on how you take it. Yeah, and I guess it depends what country you're listening to the comment in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what household in America you're listening to the comment in. Too. It's like that thing. The thing I brought up last week. That dude. I mean, it was kind of kind of old news. I was hoping it was more current. The guy who found out that they did, he did porn. Yeah. The mixed martial artist. I was wondering before I read the article if he was a more current fighter in, in the organization or a possible UFC, UFC prospect if that would damage his possibility of fighting in the UFC because remember they had that ring girl who they discovered that she did like topless soft core sh- right. photo shoots and they booted her immediately I'm, just, I'm wondering if they would if they uncovered a, a fighter who had like a porn pass would they be like oh you're gone dude no cause didn't they we can't have your wang swinging around there in front of everybody wasn't there a rumor that sexy moto had done something Oh yeah, sexy Yama, sexy Yama, sexy yeah, yeah. Yama. I'm sorry, sexy Moto. <laughs> like he, like he was a dirt biker, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> so uh, we know that Matt Mitrione had a fight recently that he did, was not on the winning end of. Um, he got poked in the eye twice and also punched in it, and he broke his orbital. He's going to be going in for his uh, his his surgery early next week. It still looked good. it looked good a week later. It was purple as all could get out, but it, it still looked good. I don't ever want my orbital broken. Oh, yeah, just does not sound good. Mm-mm. No, there's not a whole lot of bones where I'd be like, I'd be like cool with breaking anyway. <laughs> but if I had to pick between my orbital and like my pinky, like take my pinky. Yeah, because when you look at like a skull, like you know, in your anatomy classes, <laughs> and just think of that big piece just breaking off <laughs> that's a pretty hard piece. Yeah, your face is pretty sensitive too. Just, oh yeah, not... and your face oh, that's... just. Your face. <laughs> That's, and they did that on purpose to <laughs> Vanderlei Silva. They went in and shaved off his eyebrows. Oh, and Nick too, right? Nick Diaz. There. Well, they shaved out his scar tissue with with uh, Vanderlei Silva. They made him look less Cro Magnon, <laughs> which took a lot of shaving. It was like a plane on his eyebrows, Just, <laughs> like a wood plane. You know? <laughs> Poor Mitrio. What if it was like hollow, and that's how he made noises? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it looks like the news is coming out as to why Holly Holm passed on waiting for Ronda Rousey. Uh, because it's dumb? It, yes, it is dumb for her yeah, to wait. it doesn't benefit her one bit. It really, it really doesn't. She says she was open for a rematch with Ronda, just wanted whatever opportunity was going to come. Uh, think it, this is definitely even more of a challenging way to go. There's a lot of pressure behind it. I think there's a lot of anticipation and what I'm going to do after the last fight. There's a lot of high expectations and who wants to who wants to be a one-hit wonder. Uh, there's also people saying that Tate could very well win this fight. I don't know if I'm even in that corner right now. I mean, Tate's made it to she she's made it to contender three times now, for a reason, right? You know, it's it sucks to always be the second best. It would also be hilarious to have a situation where you got like a, a bit of a, a triangle with the belt, where Ronda can't can't keep it away from home, home can't keep it away from Rousey or from uh, from Tate, and Tate can't keep it away from from Rousey. I, I don't know because the the whole MMA math that people are doing on this is like, well, the whole thing is that Tate couldn't handle Rousey's judo, and Tate's got some stand up, so her stand up against Holly Holmes, but Holmes judo didn't look too bad. There was a couple times where it looked like she could have threw Rousey. She actually did throw Rousey. So who's to say she's not going to get in there and throw Tate around? Because she's I really... a very one thing that I I took away from Holly Holm is she's a lot stronger than. Anybody gave her credit for. 
And I, I can agree with that. I just really I want her to lose to Tate so then we have this infinite triangle of nonstop fights. You just, or, wanna, you just want to make sure Tate stays in the loop. Nah, man. I want to have a ladder match with all three of them. <laughs> get, some, get a TLC match going. I st- I'm taking home on this. Well, you have to. I, yeah. You have to. All right. So, so that's why we have, we have home coming out making that statement. I mean, we all kind of knew it anyway. Uh, Conor McGregor, speaking of Dana White's poster children, um, is not happy with the UFC 197, now 196 poster. He feels like he was tucked away in the back, even though he's literally face to face with Dos Anjos. How come he's not holding his belt? Because it goes on the other shoulder. You can't see it. No, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> seems like they could have had them both holding the belt. I saw a fan made poster for UFC 197 that I, that actually made me laugh out loud. Oh, is that the one where McGregor's holding everybody? In holding his hand? everybody else in the in the cage in his hands. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that would be an awesome poster. That would really stir some shit up. You know, if you missed it, it was Conor McGregor holding a small octagon like you would hold, like Galactus would hold a planet, <laughs> and and it's got Holm Tate and Dos Anjos in it, but he's much taller. He looks like a giant puppet master. Uh, they, could, sh- they should use that one. Couldn't have been any worse than Reebok's uh, Ireland shirt where they made him <laughs> choose which part of the country. Which, which part of Ireland do you support? <laughs> Reebok stirring up a civil war. Yeah. That's awesome. That was only in the 90s. We're good. We're good. It's long enough. Is the IRA still around? Can we, can we, <laughs> a little bit. Can we do an IRA shirt? Let's do an IRA shirt. Hey, and you guys are worried about Scientologists? Don't even bring up the IRA. <laughs> or the IRS right now. <laughs> Don't bring up no letters. <laughs> Dennis is not like poking any bears, man. No. <laughs> we can well we can we can poke the, the IRA and go hide out at the Scientology building. <sighs> Terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. This is uh Ronda Rousey's coach, Taverdian. He lost his cornerman license in California. He has a hearing on February second, but he lost it for falsification and whole or part of material. Uh, fact or presentation on any application for a license shall result in a license being denied and if previously granted revoked unless otherwise ordered by the commission. This is what they're citing for his uh, his revocation of his license. He appealed it. He does. He, he is going back in to see if he can get it back, but he can't corner Ronda Rousey in California now. And this is is this one of those things you think where the where the commission like coast to coast will hold up another state's decision? They they have been. <laughs> So we'll see what that means for him. If, of course, Ronda Rousey ever comes back, which I still have my my money bet. That no, she, she said she she finally said that she will be back at the end of the year. Whatever, I don't see it happening. All right, I got ten bucks riding on it, man. I know. <laughs> uh, we were talking about matchups earlier. Missed this one. Miller versus Sanchez is set for UFC 197. Now this is the one that is now 197, right? That would have been 198. Okay, right? I don't. Because no. UFC 197 is now 196. Right, right, right. So right. this this would have been 198. Now it's 197. 197. Yes. Got it. Or. <laughs> check, check. Or is it not? I don't know. No, that is. Because, yeah, because uh, yeah, 190. Well, they're both happening at the in, in Las Vegas, if that's the case. So I don't know. Now I'm confused. We're going to be confused for a while. It's, <laughs> anyway, Jim Miller versus Diego Sanchez. Uh, good matchup. I like both these guys. They're going to be fighting at 155. Diego moving back up to 155. And this is uh, this is March 5th. So you were excited about Rashad Evans and Shogun. How do you feel about this one? I'm not as excited. You're not as excited about this one? No. <clears throat> Why not? Diego, yes, cartwheel? Yeah, yeah, him. But uh, Jim Miller, I just don't, I don't... I don't see the explosiveness happening between the two. So this could be a snooze fest? Yeah. Well, either way, it's going down. Yeah, <laughs> on March fifth at UFC one ninety seven. They're the main card. They can't be the main card. No, 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 okay. no, 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 not a, <laughs> a pay per view, man. All right, no way that would happen. <laughs> then it would turn into Ultimate Fight Night eighty three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad Imes, we know him from from the Ultimate Fighter fame. Uh, six foot seven, uh, big dude. When he wasn't working out, he was he was two hundred and sixty five pounds. Um, was he Ultimate Fighter season one? Two, if I remember right, he's the one that Joe Daddy Stevenson had to, to crawl around in one of the most exhausting exercises I've ever seen. And uh, and Rich Franklin's team was like, "No, we're not going to do that one." And they just walked out and let him win the challenge. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, he retired with a fourteen and seven record back in uh, uh, two thousand nine. It's been that long. Basically, he was told by the doctors that to retire or he'd be a vegetable or dead. Hey, I know what I would choose: salad. Yeah. 
and I think this is going to be one of those things where like all the uh, the the NFL stuff's coming out now with with the uh, the concussion stuff. Oh yeah, we're probably going to see. I don't think it's going to be quite as much as we see in boxing or the NFL or something like that. But obviously, the uh, the sport is so young. We're only just now starting to see the ramifications of what happens in that cage. How come I? Well, you know what I was thinking the other day? How come we don't hear a lot about what's going on, like the guys from rugby? I don't. Actually, I don't know. Because and then uh, I, I was wondering if it's just because like our football players are have such good gear now that they think that they can just run as fast as they can into that's, each other. I think that is a huge factor. Yeah, that's into what it. I yeah. was going to say. In rugby, you kind of self limit yourself. I mean, right. You know. So. Yeah, and that's the thing about boxing and, and mixed martial arts too. The big, the big difference there is that you're so padded on your hands, you're throwing a lot harder and going for that head. Whereas with the four ounce gloves in the UFC, breaking your hand a lot easier, and you're not going right. As hard. And so, yeah, we're going to see injuries. We're going to see this concussion issue that, that's similar to what we're seeing in boxing in the NFL. But they've already had studies come out that say we're not, definitely not going to see as much of it because it's a lot. It, there's more ways to finish a fight than just going for somebody's head. And also with the four ounce gloves, your hands are a lot more right. Delicate. And plus with football, some of these guys have been playing football since they could fit into a set of shoulder pads anywhere from eight to ten years old. Oh yeah, been making contact as to where. I don't even think you can strike as a child until what sixteen or seventeen. You're not so, well, not in America. Yeah. I mean, oh wanna... well, yeah, I'm not even trying. To... <laughs> you can make cell phones when you're six years old in other countries. So yeah, you go to one of those countries where I don't even know what continent it's on. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can probably do some full contact. At six... I've actually seen full contact at six. And I bet you they bet on it. They... Oh yeah, they do, man. <laughs> Two little six-year-old kids. Matter of fact, I'm still with I'm razors right, strapped to their heels. I, I've got a, I've got a fight coming back to me right now. It was two like they were like eight years old, going full force, full contact in a cage. Adults in the audience cheering them on, probably throwing money in the middle. I have no two idea. kids enter, one kid leaves. Yeah, you know, of course, the kid who lost cried. Yeah, that's what, that's what kids who lose do. They went over and punched the winner in the nuts. Oh no, those are the the twin wrestling <laughs> the twin brothers. wrestling brothers. That yeah. was awesome. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, so we had World Series of Fighting twenty seven. Last weekend? Yeah. And this was uh, Luis Firmino up against Carlos Fedor. Uh, so not a huge fight card. Seven fights total. Alvin Williams up against Wesley Sharp. This is a first-round KO in favor of Alvin. Jason Williams, no relation, <laughs> with Zach Underwood, another TKO. Then he had a split decision in favor of Wade Wilson over Justin Hartley, your main yeah. card. What's, yeah. What? yeah. I like that non-clickable beat clickable. <laughs> what? Yeah. The odds are never in that favor. I know. Jaleel Willis up against Chauncey Foxworth. This went up to decision for Jaleel. <laughs> How did Chauncey not win? Chauncey. Name Chauncey. alone. Chauncey Foxworth. <laughs> he should be in the name of the year bracket. You seen that? He's got a brother named Bootney, Bootley Knee Fonsworth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bryce Mitchell got a win over George Medina with a submission, or Jorge Medina. Uh, Shamil Gamzatov up against Teddy Holder. This was also TKO in favor of Shamil. And then your main event, Luis Firmino. Defeats Carlos Fedor with a unanimous decision at the end of the third round. This weekend, we have, uh, is this Ultimate Fight Night? Which one is one? UFC on Fox, Johnson versus Bader. Um, got your, your three fights on your fight pass card. Matt Dwyer going against Matt Brown. Tony Martin and Felipe Oliveri and Levan Maxchevili up against Damon Jackson. You can only see those on fight pass. So cough up the what is it nine ninety nine nine ninety nine nine ninety nine get your get your month in there. I was just thinking I'm gonna I I might want to re up now because you know Kelly's gonna be fighting in Invicta and the only way to watch Invicta is through Fight Pass. There you go. I might have to cough it up. I might have to do it this week. I don't or know. pirate it. <coughs> <coughs> Fire stick. <coughs> Fire stick. <coughs> <coughs> don't do it. <laughs> be legit. Uh, Alex Caceres is gonna kick off your preliminary card, uh, card on uh, Little Fox. <laughs> up against my Sal Full and was that Bruce, Bruce Leroy, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Leroy in that fight. <laughs> Jesus, George Sullivan going up against Alexander Yakov Yakovlev. 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 There we yeah. go. Uh, stop me if you got a if you got a dog in one of these fights. Dustin Ortiz going up against Wilson Rice. Dustin. Take Dustin as well. My favorite self-appointed black belt, Kevin Casey, going up against <laughs> Raphael Natal. I take Raphael Natal on principle. <laughs> He's a principal? Yeah. Well if, well, if Kevin Casey is a black belt, then Natal is a principal. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Spencer Pratt's going to walk out Kevin Casey. Never know. You should set a prop bet. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Ten bucks if Spencer Pratt walks out Kevin Casey. Uh Olivier 
Aubin Mercier going up against Carlos Diego Ferreira. Got me there. It's three names versus three names. Yeah. Hey, I know that's it's rough. I you know the rule of three says one of these will grow up to be a hitman. Yeah, or an assassin. <laughs> And then Tariq Safadine and Jake Ellenberger fill, fill, fill out your uh, your prelim card. I like that fight. Yeah, it's a good I'm fight a, to end yeah. the prelim card. I break for Jake though. I'm going with Jake. You break for, you break the Jake break. The Jake break. I think I might go Tariq Safadine on this one. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then kicking off your main card on Fox, we have a chance to talk to They put him man. on the main card. He's on the main card. All right. Uh, this dude is a trip to talk to. Check out the interview with him, Mr. Sage Northcutt, 19 years old in the UFC and. Man, he is high on life. Oh, I put that I put that out last night, dude, and it flew it flew like hotcakes. Did it? Oh man. Kid is high on life. His energy level is just through the roof. There's no bringing this dude down. No. It actually made me and Dodge sad that we will never achieve that level of happiness when we were talking to him. <laughs> yeah, and you know what pissed me off is that I I I got like the best picture of him just shredded, right? And so Mark my wife, she was just like, Oh, I, I don't know who which one is that? And I, I just showed her the picture and she just got this big smile on her face, and I was just like, Really? <laughs> really? She was like, "Oh, wow!" You, you, I go, it's, "He's 19, Mrs. Robinson." You, you just gave her an image for later, man. No, I know. <laughs> She's like, I "Oh, know. that's gonna be you tonight." <laughs> 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 I shit you not. My neighbor down the street one time. Uh, <laughs> she's such a nice lady. She's a teacher, and I've never seen her with an alcoholic beverage in her hand. She called me up one night, completely shit housed, <laughs> and she's like, "Who?" Is fighting on TV right now. And I was like, I'm watching. I'm like, and I forget who it was. It was Luke Rockhold and somebody else. And she's like, which one's which? And I was like, well, the one doing this is Luke Rockhold. Next time he fights and you have a pay-per-view, you call me over. So I can watch. Yeah. yeah. Not my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me over. Uh, so that's uh, Sage Northcutt now, of course, wooing hearts. And you can, you can check him out in the interview. Up against Brian Barbarino, who's taking the fight on late notice anyway. Sage Northcutt, one of the poster children of Dana White, obviously the favorite in this fight, probably going to walk away with it as well. Pissing off a lot of fighters, got eighty thousand dollars in his second UFC fight. Yeah, and, and as much as uh, as as much as Dodge tried to corner him to tell him what do you think you bring to the UFC, he's only nineteen and he still dodged that question. Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> He's he is now the most elusive fighter in the <laughs> UFC. Uh, speaking of, I, I, I brought up the term "poster children" a few times on, on this uh, podcast, and there was a story that popped up in my my Reddit that it wasn't on here. Uh, apparently, the UFC this is this was weird to me. I wish Dodge was here to talk about it because I'm not sure if any of us know the answer. The UFC hired an Olympic wrestler to work with McGregor. Yeah, when does the UFC hire coaches? I don't. It's just it, that's another conundrum that all these other fighters are just like. How, it's it, I call it king. They're Don Kinging the UFC. It's crazy to me because why if you if you're non if you're non biased and you you are a company running something for fighters, why would you bring in coaches? Because this is not the first time they brought in a coach for somebody. Which is just weird because all the other guys when they're talking about fighter pay, they're like, man, I gotta pay. I got to pay for my gym fees. I got to pay my coaches. I got to pay my cornermen. And then uh, out of nowhere, when it's pretty obvious who the UFC is favoring at this point in time, and it's Conor McGregor, they're going to pay for an Olympic gold medalist to come in and coach him on wrestling? Didn't they bring in somebody, a special dietitian for certain somebody last year? And that was a big thing everybody was talking about? I just, yeah, but I just, I I failed to see the legitimacy legitimacy behind it. It's just weird to me. I don't know. I, I, again, if they were to say that McGregor's camp brought in a wrestling coach, I would understand that. But the, the, the UFC, who shouldn't have any personal stock in a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Bad move. Yeah. Uh, Luria Alcanta, Yuri Al- Alcantara going up against Jimmy Rivera. Uh, this, could, this could be a good fight, but I'm going with Yuri Al- Alcantara. Yeah. This next fight. Next fight is... <laughs> it's gonna be mayhem. Here we here we go, man. This is this is gonna be the the fight that you could see at a little league game. Josh Barnett going up against Big Ben Rothwell. You know, both these guys. Uh, somebody said I think between the two of them, they got something like close to eighty fights. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're not getting any play. And the biggest thing is, I don't think any one of these guys are are like UFC game players. They don't. They're not into trying to hype themselves up, or well, Josh Barnett had a hard enough time getting back or getting into the UFC in general, uh, right? You know, uh, and Big Ben Rothwell came over from the IFL, and uh, he's he's just been kind of middle of the ground as far as it goes and making uh, waves in the heavyweight division. Yeah, I like he's trying to play the heel. He's trying to be the evil guy. Remember him and his? He was the one that did that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know, I like that. This just seems to me like the fight where it's like where the ump is confused whether or not the kid was safe on first place. And then you got one dad screaming from one side of the dugout, another dad screaming from the other side of the dugout. They're stealing our jobs! 
Cubs! Yeah. Then they come running out in the middle, and they're kicking dirt on each other. And, <laughs> and then your main event, Anthony Johnson going up against Ryan Bader. Ryan Bader gets a title shot if he can get through Anthony Johnson on this one. This is a, this is one of those things, uh, careful what you ask for. Ryan Bader, of course, has great wrestling credentials and a huge overhand right. Anthony Johnson already had his title shot, got manhandled by the champion, D.C. Bad. Uh, but he's still a big, big dude and very talented and hard to beat. I don't, yeah. I. It's going to be sad that if, if Bader just comes in and handles Johnson, but then it's going to be sad the other way around, too, because cause Bader did a lot of shit talking. Anthony Johnson, for all in all, is a pretty humble person. Yeah. But Bader's been doing a lot of shit talking, and I don't know. I don't think it's going to be sad if Bader gets handled because I think that's what most people are expecting. Because everything that, that Bader can do as far as wrestling goes, Johnson has an answer for. Yeah. And, 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 and he hasn't been shit talking to Johnson. A lot of Bader's shit talking has been to DC. Just to shit talk? Yeah. I think the only way he, he, if he finds that right hand and stuns Johnson, it's probably going to be the only way that he wins this fight. You don't think that Bader has the ability to toss him around like DC did? I don't think so. No, I think Anthony Johnson's a lot bigger than Bader. I'm pretty sure. I don't think it's going to be as easy for him. I'm, let's let's see. I'm curious now. Bader's stats are six foot two, and and of course light heavyweight. Anthony Johnson six foot two, so they're essentially the same size. Johnson just looks bigger coming into these What's fights the, a lot. Yeah, and then of course you have his ridiculous reach as well. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I still think Johnson's a lot of man to move around for for Bader. That right hand though is dangerous every time it comes through. Yeah, and uh, Bellator is also going down this weekend as well. You can check this one out. Uh, your main event, we'll go over that, is uh, Rafael Butler up against Tony Johnson. Uh, Patrick Freire going up against Ryan, <laughs> Randy's son, Ryan Couture, and uh, Paul Bradley taking on Chris Honeycutt. Your main event, Paul Daly, going up against Andy Ulrich. And again, that's happening this weekend, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like I just saw this right here. Yeah, you're right. that's what you're with me. I started reading the one where I was like, no, the, no, that's Gracie. That's that's February 19th. I confused yeah. myself. Yeah. Actually, this one's going down tonight. So by the time you listen to this podcast, it's probably already on. Make sure you tune in and check. Oh, it out. Oh, that's here in Fresno. Wow. Why are we there, man? You know why we're. Where's not our press there. credentials? You know why we're not there. Neither one, none of us would have made it. <laughs> like you said, this is true. We're lucky to make it here and do the show today. <laughs> At least three of us. Dodge. <laughs> so thanks for listening. Make sure you check out all the MMA this weekend. It's all free, so it's totally worth it. And uh, tell your friends, spread the word about Split Decision, your award-winning fan favorite <laughs> podcast of 2015, courtesy of Fightbook MMA. And uh, again, a big thanks to Real One. Check out his new album, Flight 420. Check him out at real1209.com and at real1209 on Instagram. Strongboardbalance.com. Get on board. Change the way you work out. Strongboardbalance.com. MyMMANews.com as well. Tell your friends to find us on Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, SplitDecisionMMA.com, and anywhere MMA podcasts are pretty much broadcast. Hey, that rhymed. Yeah. I think I could kind of be a rapper. (laughs) (laughs) See, one intro, and this guy's hooked. (laughs) Uh, Twitter and Instagram, SD underscore MMA, and Facebook, throw us a like, Split Decision MMA podcast. That wraps it up for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time. Bueller and the Ruloff brothers from the Ruloff Family Inc. Studios saying have a good night, and we'll see you at the fights. Spay and neuter your raccoons.